no, we have not gotten to the spinning wheels yet because I have one more little thing to talk about, and that is the fiber. And the reason I want to speak to you about it is that when you first become interested in hand spinning, if you go to a uh, sheep fair or a fiber festival or anything like that, it can be overwhelming. And I want to help you understand what you might want to choose as your very first spinning fibers because some fibers spin easier than others and it's not something we need to get into in an introduction video series but I want to let you know okay now the first thing is definitely just start with wool okay don't I realize that all the silk hankies and everything looks stunning but those are a little bit more challenging so stay with wool that's my first thing for you now, what I'm going to be using in classes, in our tutorial, is our bare line of roving. And this is the same wool, the same um, Peruvian Highland wool that we have in our Wool of the Andes yarn. It just hasn't been spun by the machines, okay? It's a nice long fiber, nice staple. Each one of the hairs is long. It's easy to work with. Now, I'm only using the white because I think it's going to video easier for you to see while we're spinning. You don't have to use white. In fact, what I would recommend is that you choose something that is just like we have our Wool of the Andes in a roving and it's lovely different heathers, okay? If you choose a coloring that you like, then you're going to be happy spinning it. Now here is the little bit of a bridge that you want to do, okay? If you were to buy hand-dyed fiber, my concern is that it would cost enough that it would make you kind of be tense or feel like you have to do it perfectly and you can't make mistakes. That's one of the reasons why I'm really glad that we have the Wool of the Andes roving because it is an incredible deal. I don't mean to sound like a commercial, but this is a bridge for you, okay? One option is to go with a roving that's just white and it's been processed and that's fine, but you're going to fall asleep spinning it. The next one is to get like the wool of the Andes, a simple color like this. Now you could, at a fiber show, buy a raw fleece and you're going to see those. But those take some processing in between. If you really want to just sit down and spin, get some roving. Okay. Having said that, if you feel like you're going to be able to handle something that's hand dyed by an independent dyer, go ahead, as long as you don't make yourself so tense that you don't enjoy your spinning. That's my only concern. Now, if you're at a fiber festival, I need to warn you, lots of the indie dyers make up their yarns in these braids, okay? This is like having candy in an, un in an open jar sitting out. I'm just telling you, you're going to see these and you're going to go crazy. I always end up buying several braids. They're worse than sock yarn, I'm telling you. And you need to be careful. See back up in our little, our, my little ladder here, we've got other braids from other spinners in the office. Just letting you know. The other thing is when you're at a fiber festival, let's say you're looking at braids or maybe you're looking at you know, something else that's just more of a solid color. And you can buy solid colors at fiber festivals in big lots. They might be done up in balls, things like that. But one of the things you need to start thinking about as a hand spinner, as a knitter, you normally look at your balls of yarn and think, how much yardage do I need to make something, okay? As a hand spinner, you need to gradually learn how much weight you need to make something, okay? So let's say when you knit socks, you like your socks to be maybe just a little above your ankle. So you probably buy two 50 gram, you know, balls of sock yarn. That means if you want to ever spin for socks, you have to think, I need 100 grams of a fiber to make something. And this is something you'll just start to get instinctively. Lots of spinners just spin yarn and then decide what to make with it afterwards. That's more my style. 
other spinners buy fiber for a specific project. Either way is great. It just, I would say as a new spinner, get fun things. Get some braids. Get some solid colors. As long as you stay, you know, within your comfort zone financially, because otherwise I'm afraid you're going to get worried about making mistakes, okay, because you're going to waste some yarn when you're learning to spin. It's the way it's going to be. Then just enjoy spinning. Don't worry about what you're going to make. And then eventually you can start to make the connection between what you've spun and what you're able to make, okay? So if you can, go to a fiber festival near your home. Or, of course, we've got our roving right, you know, online. Whatever you need to do, I am actually now going to get behind the spinning wheel and we'll start talking about the wheels.